Hey everyone, just a quick heads up. If you've clicked this video, I assume you know a little bit about the topic, but if not, I am going to be talking about abuse and other heavy topics of conversation. And I know some people can't deal with that. So if you need to skip this video and just not engage with this for your own comfort, I'm totally okay with that. You need to prioritize your own comfort. I'll be fine. I'll see you next week. Just take care of yourself first. Excuse me. No. Hey, 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 please don't chew on that. Hey, quiet on set, all right? Uncle Dunkle has to go talk about internet people. Oh, my carpet! Celebrities, they're just like us. Except not really, because our culture refuses to let us treat them like humans. I'm of the mindset that actors are just people who are paid to put on little shows for us, like they're workers. It's okay to have favorites and to like them, but some people treat them like entertainment batteries that they just get to project onto, and I don't think that's healthy. And the topic that I want to talk about with you today is no different, because that conversation has been a divisive war zone, and it really shows how obsessive and delusional some people can be when talking about celebrities. And I think the way that people are discussing it, especially recently, shows the disgusting level of how desensitized we are to any serious topic as long as a famous person is involved. By the way, just a warning, I'm aware that my position in this very nuclear argument is going to make both sides mad at me, and I just don't care. You know, I'm speaking my mind, that's what matters. You can be mad at me, I won't notice. There's alcohol in this. I'm just kidding, there's no alcohol in this. It's like eight in the morning, this is a chai tea latte. Okay, you've seen the title and the thumbnail, you know what this is about, and if you've somehow missed the details about what's going on, here's a very brief summary. Johnny Depp, the actor best known for the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise as well as other things, is involved in a domestic abuse court case with the actress Amber Heard, who is best known for her role in the Aquaman movie. I really hope this goes without saying, but domestic abuse is a very serious topic that should not be joked about or made light of, ever. It's not something that I would wish on my worst enemy, and especially when you're talking about it in the context of what other people have gone through, I think it's a very, very serious situation that people should not be joking about. And I really do hope you all agree with me, because unfortunately, that's the part where a lot of these conversations seem to drop off. Amber Heard came forward about this abuse during the peak of the Me Too movement, where people, especially in the entertainment industry, were encouraged to speak out against their abusers, no matter how powerful they were. The fact that these people could no longer hide that abuse is a good thing, but it shook up an industry that, spoiler alert, was kind of built on the abuse of power. After these allegations, Johnny Depp was blasted by tabloids and press, probably to an extreme amount due to his role in a children's franchise. He appeared in less movies, he was recasted in the franchises he was in, and the good faith he'd won by being everyone's favorite childhood pirate man was lost. But then, over time, bits of evidence began surfacing that Amber had inflicted abuse onto Johnny, as old interviews were re-examined, audio tapes were leaked, and the story became less and less cut and dry. Until this point, when a celebrity was called out for their abusive behavior, the go-to response would be, oop, sorry, didn't mean to, I was a different person, or just not saying anything at all and trying to lie low. This was the first time that there was conflicting evidence that gave both sides of this argument ample ammunition to use against one another and to defend themselves with. And for a while, that was it. Just two camps arguing against one another with whatever evidence they had. It seemed to be an even he said, she said, but with the main difference being Amber Heard was still in movies, whereas Johnny Depp was not. Though the idea of having teams and sides in an argument involving domestic abuse revolts me, I do empathize and understand with why that happened. People don't want to support abusers, and if people are convinced that their actor of choice is being wrongfully accused of this behavior, it makes sense why people would want to defend them so strongly. The part of my brain that is desperately trying to cling on to positivity is saying that it's a good thing that people care so much because it means we're treating the topic of abuse seriously. The reason people are so vigilant in this debate is because abuse is not being taken lightly, and that's good. But then I see how people are going about those conversations online, 
and that little positive part of my brain dries up like a raisin. At the time of me recording this, there is an active court case regarding Johnny and Amber going on right now. It's a defamation trial, and it means that the conversation around who's the abuser is no longer in the shadows and is brought into the main spotlight. I'm going to jump straight to the point and spoil it for you now. We as a culture are not ready to talk about complex abuse with maturity when there are celebrities involved. The presence of public figures just drives up people's emotions too much to the point where you see posts like the ones I'm about to show you, but fair warning, it is bleak. I went to my local Starbucks this morning and saw this. Baristas are savage. And in the image, you can see a quirky little Team Johnny Depp and Team Amber Heard opposing tip jars. There are fan cams of the trial footage where people edit memes or filters over what's being said, usually aimed to make one side look superior. On that note, here is a YouTube video titled Johnny Depp Being Savage that has 60,000 views in only 13 hours. Here is a TikTok of a boy thirsting over the actress Haley Steinfeld where he morphs into Amber, who as a reminder is a topic of abuse. And there's also one where a woman thirsts over Johnny's text messages depicting him strangling Amber out of rage. There are also TikTok live streams of the trial where the chats are rooting for their side like it's the Super Bowl and driving up the engagement to let these companies know to pump out more invasive content like this. The conversations being had by the people on Johnny Depp's side are convinced that he is a sweet and honest man who did not deserve any of this. To give us a look at their mindset, here are a few of his supporters' thoughts. I want Johnny Depp to win this trial, look directly at Amber, and say, you will always remember this as the day that you almost caught Captain Jack Sparrow, and walk out of the courtroom. Then I will be satisfied. His small side smile devastates every time. You know it's a tick to hold back the grieving, sadness, tears. Despite his comedic responses to her defense shenanigans, it's a mask for the continued pain he's feeling. This is lifelong trauma, long after this trial is over. Amber Heard's lawyers during the trial. I'm sorry guys, you can call me the fun police if you want, but I don't think that we should be making fan cams, memes, and epic pwnage fantasies over domestic abuse. Even if Johnny Depp is as innocent as these people want him to be, it would still make these posts weird, and they don't help anyone. It's just invasive and obsessive, and just feels weird. There is also a strong defense from people for Amber, but it is in the vocal minority, I think. The loudest parts of the internet have decided that Johnny is innocent, but it is still a divided room, and there are some people who support Amber. Well, I still believe Amber Heard. Hashtag, I believe her. It's funny how Johnny cannot respond appropriately, correctly, or clearly to literally anything he's asked. His stance have somehow demolished Amber in court. Meanwhile, occurrences like this are ordinary, where he's stuck without answers or proven wrong. That Johnny Depp shit is genuinely the greatest misinformation campaign I have ever seen on the internet, by the way, lol. I have never seen so many well-meaning people fooled by Twitter stands in my entire life. Depp has notoriously been a cancer on film sets for over two decades and hasn't been a box office draw since Bush was in office. So the stands flipped that and said he got cancelled by woke Hollywood, where they won't hire him anymore and they got regular people to believe it, lol. She's hot and deserves to be innocent. And honestly, one of those tweets really does bring up something important that I think we need to consider. Not that one. That one. I hate. Both Johnny Depp and Amber Heard have plenty of accounts painting them as unpleasant and sometimes violent people. The people who are pro-Johnny Depp are using Amber's accusations against her, and the people who are pro-Amber are using Johnny Depp's accusations against him, but none are more credible than the other. They're all testimonies. But people aren't treating these accusations equally, and are instead cherry-picking the ones they want to use. The conversation around this topic also has a lot to do with gender. I'm sorry, I hate genders as much as the next person, but unfortunately, it is involved here. This tweet mentioned the woke Hollywood argument, and that's worth looking at. The Me Too movement was used to support women and non-men who usually have their voices silenced or spoken over, so men were usually the targets of these accusations. When even the slightest possibility came up that Amber Heard, a woman, might have lied just to smear Johnny Depp's name, the pushback against her seemed to get weirdly stronger, and a lot of those arguments had to do with her gender. Women are also guilty of domestic violence, but often they get away with it. Hashtag me poo. Sums up all women in court when it pertains to playing the victim in a domestic dispute. Depp, accused without evidence of domestic abuse, branded a wife beater, and is cancelled. 
Heard admits to being a domestic abuser, accused of severing his finger, emotionally controlling him, etc. No consequences. Because she's a woman. Hashtag me poo. The trial just shows how a woman can destroy a man with just words alone, while a man has to present thousands of evidences to prove that he's not the perpetrator, but the victim. It's just so sad because there are so many men facing this every day. Men can be victims, and abuse is not gender-specific. And it's true that men are pressured to keep quiet about it, or they'll be seen as less masculine. But cherry-picking evidence and talking about these actors as if they represent their entire gender as a monolith is just counterintuitive, and it muddies a very important discussion. Also, hashtag me poo is a terrible addition to add to your own tweet. Me poo? Why would you ever type that out? It seems like nobody loves to acknowledge it, but the existing power structures in the entertainment industry still hold men with the most amount of power. And I think when the Me Too movement started, it was just a cavalcade of men being called out for their predatory behavior, and a lot of insecure people saw that and kind of felt like their gender was under criticism, maybe even under attack. The possibility of Amber Heard being an abuser while being a woman is kind of the outlier that they've been waiting for, and so it makes sense that these people would jump on this with their angle. Women can absolutely be abusers, and that is a conversation that deserves to be had, but people are being misogynistic, and I think that goes to show that people were waiting for a woman in the entertainment industry to become the scapegoat for their argument. We need to be able to talk about male victims of domestic abuse without being misogynistic. That doesn't help anyone. That immediately undoes any kind of good faith that you go into that argument with. I don't understand why so many people are doing that. I hope I've been able to explain to you why this is such a weighted controversy and why each side feels so passionately about it. We have two actors with strong supporters of them and their characters who are now models of both a support movement and the backlash to it, both armed with testimonies and evidence against them and each other and with neither side willing to back down. And there's a good chance that you, the person watching this video right now, actually sides with one actor over the other right now. Like, it's fair in an argument to come to your own conclusion. That's fine. I think that's not bad at all. But if you or anyone else say that they know for a fact which side is telling the truth based on the evidence you've seen, they're wrong. This is what's been bugging me most about this whole thing. Like, the reason there is a trial happening at all is because you can't piece together the truth based on the evidence there is. Like, there needs to be a jury to come to a conclusion. And the average person who is playing detective right now, trying to point the finger at the other side, does not have all the answers. You can't say that Amber Heard is innocent based on the testimony of another actor. You can't say Johnny Depp is innocent based on the twitches in his face you are not trained for this, and I think what bugs me are the people who are so sure that they're right because they came to their own conclusion based on evidence they saw when they don't have the whole picture. None of us do. And if I could be even more annoying and put my psychology hat on, it's possible that both Johnny and Amber can't see themselves as the abuser in this situation. With situations like this, the lines can get blurred and self-awareness can become really tricky. It's very possible that both Amber and Johnny see themselves as completely innocent here. Guys, you know me. I don't like it when complex and mature discussions that require nuance are blown off in favor of memes and clickbait and misogyny and blind loyalty. It actually hurts me because I know somewhere in there, there is a deep discussion that we can have with critical thinking. And because there's an easier option, people aren't going for that. Abuse is not uncommon. Statistically, it is happening to at least one person that we know. It's everywhere. It's an epidemic. And the conversations we have around it matter because the way people even individually approach this topic could have drastic ramifications in the lives of the people around them. If we are ever going to normalize mature discussions about this, we can't keep wasting time with memes and desensitization towards abuse because we are wasting valuable time we could be using towards, I don't know, maybe making things better. The loudest voices about this conversation are not licensed to give their opinion. Even I'm not. Like, I could not tell you 
who is innocent or guilty based on the evidence we have, that's not my job. It's none of your jobs unless you're on that jury. And even the people in that courtroom, even though they're the only people who can put out an answer, are really there for a defamation trial. Like, nobody's going to jail here. It's, I don't know. I think people are trying to... (sighs) If we have tip jars based on a domestic abuse trial, I think it's a pretty clear sign that we're doing something wrong. And don't get me wrong, I don't blame the individual people here because we are conditioned to care so vehemently about celebrities' lives. Like, that's what is being sold to us in the movies and the tabloid magazines. Like, we are supposed to care about these people. The entertainment industry wants you to feel involved in these celebrities' private lives because that's how they get you to consume and be a part of the consumer relationship that they want. Like, this woman loves Johnny Depp's movies so much, she wants them to be real life. The hard truth that a lot of people don't want to acknowledge is that you do not know who the abuser is. And it's understandable that you want to. Part of me wants to know as well. But based on the limited evidence that we have access to, you cannot figure it out. And I think it's a real problem that people are assuming that they can. There's a lot of evidence that I didn't go over. There's security camera footage of Amber's alleged affair. Johnny Depp's daughter proved that he lied under oath. There's actor testimonials against both parties, leaked texts. There's a legitimate case involving feces in their bed, I guess. Like, apparently that's a big thing. But I'm not here to go over all of that evidence and try to tell you who's most right, because that's not my job. Anyone who is claiming that they can give you the truth right now is trying to sell you something. My point is that we could have every shred of evidence that the internet has so far about this laid out in front of us, and you still could not pinpoint an abuser and convince everyone else, because that's how complex this situation is. We are not qualified to do that. There are very few people who are, and they're not yelling on Twitter right now. There is a part of me that is dying to know the truth, to know who is the abuser, because my heart would break if I knew that either one of those people had to watch the person who tormented them walk away scot-free. That tortures me. That, that is not something I want to happen. But if I could break my own rule and form a semblance of an opinion To me, it really feels like both Amber and Johnny have displayed abusive behavior here, mentally, emotionally, and physically. I don't feel comfortable siding with either party here because I recognize that activity in both of them. Like, I, it feels like they are both contributing towards the abusive dynamic. But this is what I'm talking about. Like, I am coming to that conclusion that I have based on my own experiences and what I've seen. If you disagree, it makes sense because you are projecting your own idea and conclusion based on what you have seen. Like, there's no truth in either of what we have to assume. Like, we can't figure it out. It's based solely on what we feel. You can tell me I'm wrong. You can try to explain to me, like, everything I've missed. But you don't have access to any of the evidence that I couldn't, right? Like... You don't have some secret ace up your sleeve to disprove this whole thing. You don't. None of us do. The biggest issue here are people acting like the answer is obvious, like they've cracked it, and they're fighting other people who don't align with that belief, and nothing is being done, and it's making this conversation that, again, could be productive, just wildly unhelpful to everyone involved. The idea that you've figured it out and everyone else who disagrees just has bad intentions is a completely disruptive rhetoric that is only going to lead to hurt and pain if we adopt it into our societal norm. This should have been something that was handled privately. I, I really do believe that. And I get why it isn't, because they're celebrities, right? It's understandable why this is newsworthy. But look what happened. Like, I don't think... I don't think any good is coming from this. Abuse should not be viewed or talked about as a spectator sport where one side can win. Like, I think these should be about identifying the victim, removing them from harm's way, and a focus on healing. And when 
celebrities are involved, it becomes about entertainment and whether they're going to be recast in the movies they're in. Like, that's, mm, that's not good. We can't solve what's happening with Amber and Johnny's relationship. We also can't change the conversations around it. What we can change is how we move forward on a personal level. If we're going to walk away from this entire thing with a positive, that's where it's going to be. A little positivity part of my brain is cheering that I said that. Please don't forget that celebrities are people. Like, I know that sounds silly, but they're workers. And just because their job makes them celebrated in our culture, it doesn't mean that they're not people who are valid of humanity and criticism all the same. Please don't rejoice in people's pain, even if it means your side is exonerated. This trial is going to end soon, and it's likely that one side will be the winner, I guess, and the internet is going to be intolerable because one side is going to feel validated, the other side is going to feel like an injustice happened, and no one is going to be convinced that they could be wrong. This is going to be talked about like it is a season finale of a show or like the results of the Olympics. And people are going to be projecting a lot onto whatever the verdict is. So don't participate. Don't engage with that. Just if you can, remove yourself from that because it's gonna be terrible. I'm sorry to all of the victims of abuse who have to witness this being the conversation about it because it's and it's not a good sign that things are getting better, but they are. The conversations around abuse have made a lot of headway recently. And despite this entire thing being a trending topic, things are going to continue to get better. This is a step back, but there will be more steps forward. And if you are someone who is completely engrossed in this trial, like you have a Team Johnny or Team Amber shirt, and you're really mad that I dissed your fave in this video, you can go ahead and yell at me in the comments. Like, just dump all that out. Just get it off your chest. Blow off some steam. Because honestly, this cat is a demon. <laughs> and for the next week, I'm going to have my hands full. I'm not even going to have time to, like, be online. So, you know, go ahead. Do you have anything you want to add, Aeoli? I appreciate you all taking some time out of your day to spend with me here. I appreciate that. And I'm going to be corny. I do enjoy our time together. New videos every week. Some of them are fun. Some of them are heavy, like this one. You never know. It just, I have ADHD. I talk about whatever. You never know what you're going to get. That's Vegas rules, baby. Thank you to each and every single one of my beautiful patrons for supporting me this week. You are the wind beneath my wings and the balloons to my flying animated house. I'm really thankful for all of your support. It really matters that you like me enough to support me that way. And I wish I could give each and every one of you a hug. There, I hope you liked it. Sorry, it was awkward. Please take care this week. Don't forget to be extra kind to yourself because obviously you deserve it. And because I told you to. It's a direct order. I have no ranking, but you gotta do it. Anyway, I love you lots. Take care of yourselves. See you next week. Bye.